Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about thyroid tonight, or I'm going to be talking about thyroid. We'll probably have a little discussion. And I want to start with all the materials for educational purposes only. The information provided is not intended to cure, treat, or prevent disease. And these days, what I'm saying, every word I've said, or I will say, hasn't been approved by the FDA. So that's the disclaimer which they require us to do. What I'm going to be doing is providing you with hopefully some good information to help you figure out what's going on in your life and how to deal with it. So the thyroid gland, that's your thyroid gland. It's a butterfly gland right up in here. And its main job is to make T4. There's two thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. The thyroid makes T4. With T4 and T3, it regulates the metabolic rate of all the cells in our body. It has to do with cell growth, tissue di differentiation, reproductive functions, body temperature, metabolism. Thyroid is one of the key drivers of our engine, of our body. And you'll see as we go through this, what I'm going to do is talk about the thyroid, talk about how it's called axes in the body, that between different systems in the body, and how they're all intertwined and relate. Because we'll see as the evening goes on, you could have symptoms of hypothyroidism, and it could not be a thyroid. It, you could have, um, a woman could have estrogen or progesterone imbalances, but that's because of the thyroid or the adrenals. And so if you just throw hormones, female hormones in there, you might feel better for a little while, but then it stops working. Or you have to go to higher doses to force the system. So we're gonna be talking about the interrelationships between all that. I'm also going to be talking about what we're doing to our body that's affecting the thyroid, the adrenals, the female and the male hormones. And some of the time, we're to blame, not that we're getting older. How many people have had their doctor say, gee, that's not a bad level or a bad number for someone your age? Yeah, you love that, don't you? And it's usually somebody who looks like they just got out of diapers that said that. And so that, never accept that. To someone your age, you don't want to be normal for the general population because the general population is an unhealthy population. You want to be big, huge steps away from average for your age. Yeah, it's tissue differentiation. That's as a baby, um, a fetus is growing, it starts from one cell and it, that the cells start differentiating. Some will be bone, some will be skin, oh, okay. and the thyroid, even in a fetus, very, very important for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And I'm gonna be walking around, so I'm gonna block all of you some of the time, and none of you all the time, I hope. <laughs> So if we look at just some of the different things that go on, we think the thyroid does everything. It makes T4, breaks it down to T3, and everything is great. The hypothalamus puts out thyrotropin-releasing hormone. The pituitary puts out TSH. You've all heard of TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone. That's what, when T4 levels drop, the pituitary puts out thyroid stimulating hormone to stimulate our thyroid to make and release more T4. If the hypothalamus isn't working right, you need TRH and TSH for the thyroid to make thyroid hormones, okay? So when the thyroid gland releases the hormone, the body's happy, it gives negative feedback, it sends messages back to the hypothalamus and the pituitary, we're happy guys, stop secreting those hormones and the thyroid stops releasing and making more T4. And that's assuming the body can make it, you can break down T4 to T3, and the hypothalamus and the pituitary are working. Then the thyroid releases the hormone and out in the tissues in our body, we take T4 and convert it to T3. T3 is the active hormone. 
T4 is a tyrosine, that's the T, and four iodine. Then out here is an enzyme that breaks off one of the iodines, and that makes T3, which for most tissues is the active hormone. One of the, how many, how many people have had their doctor check their thyroid and only check TSH, mm -hmm. TSH and T4? Okay, what if the body can't convert T4 to T3? If you have enough T4, your TSH will be normal because the, that regulating is only with T4 and the body's happy, but you could be severely hypothyroid because you're not converting to T3. And so the new science is terrible because all we do is check T4. And we'll go into that. Okay, 80% of what's made in the thyroid is T4, 20% is T3. We convert T4 to T3 with an enzyme, diiodinase, and that's in a lot of tissues. It happens in the gut, the liver, and in most of our tissues. So what if that enzyme isn't working right? Or what if we're doing things that block that enzyme from working? Your thyroid is fine it's that you're not converting from T4 to T3. So just throwing more thyroid hormone in, isn't if you put more levothyroxine, that's T4, all you're gonna get is the side effects from it. You're not gonna feel better, because your problem is in the conversion. So there's a lot of different things we have to look at. To convert T4 to T3, we need adequate amounts of selenium, and the soil's getting depleted, not polluted, it's getting polluted too, <laughs> getting depleted of selenium. Elevated cortisol, we'll see as we go on, when we get stressed, the body makes reverse T3. That's a mirror image of T3. Instead of pulling this iodine off, it pulls this one off. And what that does is it goes into the receptor site, but doesn't stimulate it, but it ties it up and it blocks the T3 from getting in there. And you'll see as we go along, there's a reason the body does that. And a lot of doctors don't check reverse T3. If they check it, they just check total T3, which is the good one and the bad one. What if you have too much of the bad T3? Your total could be perfectly normal, but you feel terrible. All right, so in the thyroid, remember the butterfly looking organ? And there were those little round areas. Those are follicles in the thyroid. And the, the, the thyroid makes T4 and stores it in the follicle. When the body wants more thyroid hormone, it releases the T4 from the thyroid into the blood and it goes out to all the tissues. Then T4 is converted to T3 by the diiodinase enzyme as the body needs it. Something to think about, and this was an analogy that I heard at a lecture I went to and I took it through one of my slides. Mm -hmm. Think of your checking and savings account. You wanna make sure you have enough money in your checking account so while you're out shopping you can keep writing checks. And when it gets low, what do you do? You transfer some money from your savings into the checking account. So think of T4 as the savings account. That's your store of these semi-active hormones and when you need more, the body releases it and converts it to T3. That puts money in your checking account. So you need adequate amounts of T4 and the proper amounts of T3. What the old time doctors used to do was, they would do blood work and then they would, um, come block you now, and then they would check your blood work, give you a prescription, and then when you came back a few weeks later, the question the old time GPs used to always ask is, and how are you feeling? Because you know how you're feeling better than a lab number. And if you look at different labs, like vitamin D, the normal range is 25 to 100. But how crazy is that? That's where 70% of the population fell when they tested them. And so with thyroid, how many very healthy people with normal thyroid function have their thyroid levels checked? So that range is where 70% of people who might have a thyroid issue fall. And you don't wanna be the average in there. 
also you might for you if the average is from here to here for t4 and t3 your normal might be on the low end your normal might be on the high end what if your numbers were reversed you're still normal according to the lab but you both would feel terrible so it's not just what the blood levels show it's more how do you feel at the levels you're at the building blocks of t4 and t3 we need iodine we need um, tyrosine to make the T4. We also need zinc and selenium and antioxidants for that conversion. Come on in, people. There's seats up here. Come on up. Um, so you need those other nutrients. Our soil is getting more depleted. We're eating the standard American diet, which doesn't have a lot of these nutrients. So even if your thyroid is fine, you can have problems converting T4 to T3 because of a nutrient lack, or lack of nutrients, I guess is the better way of saying it. Some symptoms of hypothyroidism, weight gain, lack of energy, mental fogginess, dry skin, hair, nails, bad nails, loss of the outer third of your eyebrow. Do you ever notice some people just have little tiny like half inch eyebrows? Joint and muscle aches, the women can have irregular periods, men and women can have fertility issues, reproductive issues, sugar carb cravings, high cholesterol. And we'll see how low thyroid can cause a problem with cholesterol. Is that the same with Hashimoto? Yeah. Now, the question is, is that the same with Hashimoto's? Hashimoto's is a swelling of the thyroid. That can be from a couple of reasons, and you have to find out what your reason is before you start adding in iodine and different things. One, if let's say there's a conversion problem from T4 to T3 because you're lacking selenium or something on that idea, your body is gonna try to make more thyroid hormone, but you don't have enough iodine or you're lacking in tyrosine, so it can't. So what happens, it's like a muscle, it starts working harder and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's burning itself out, it's spinning its wheels and it can make more but it doesn't have the building blocks. So it really can't. The second problem with ha the other Hashimoto's issue is an autoimmune problem. Your body is attacking the thyroid and that a lot of times has to do with toxicity in the body. When the body, there's toxic substances in the body most of us remember going way back to high school, the cells with DNA, RNA, then to DNA, and we make a new cell. That transcription, if there's toxins in the body, that can corrupt the transcript, transcription a little bit. And the thyroid is a rapidly evolving and replicating tissue. So what happens is, it makes thyroid tissue, but it's a little bit off, and then your immune system is doing its job. It says, that's foreign, let's attack it and get rid of it. And you start attacking your own thyroid. So Hashimoto's could be something you can do, well you can do something on both ends, but the therapy would be totally different. Okay, Thank you. you're welcome. Basal body temperature, anyone take the, has anyone ever taken the basal body temperature? Okay. Old way of doing it, still very, very reliable. The trick is you want to have not a digital thermometer, and they don't have mercury ones, but they have liquid thermometers, a thermometer with liquid in it. You want to have it on the night table. You don't even want to move in the morning. You want to very carefully go out and reach out and get it and stick it under your armpit for 10, 15 minutes. Go back to sleep if you want. And you want to chart your temperature for two or three or four days in a row and take an average. If you're up below 97.2, odds are your body doesn't have enough active thyroid hormone. And that's very good. Women who are menstruating, you should do this the first two weeks of the month because during ovulation in the last pipe, your temperature goes up, and that's gonna give you a false basal temperature, not a false, but not what we're looking for. Okay. What, now we're gonna get into the meat, and what's causing hypothyroidism? So, one of the lectures I gave to a group of professionals, and I had them divide up, it was a hormone lecture, 
people who felt they had a male or female hormone imbalance were in this group. Thyroid imbalance was in this group. People with adrenal <coughs> stress or exhaustion in that group. And I gave them each a list of symptoms to make sure they were in the right group. You know, if they matched the symptoms, they were in the right group. And everyone was in the right group. And then I asked them to please switch lists. I gave them all the exact same lists. Because you can have the same group of symptoms for all three problems or a combination of them. So just because you're tired or you're wired or you don't have energy, you can't exercise like you did, or you're gaining weight in the middle here, or sex drive is down, that doesn't mean it's thyroid, adrenal, or hormone. It's yes to all of them, because they all will affect each other. So the adrenals, when you have elevated, let me get it way so you people can see that. When you have elevated stress, it suppresses thyroid function. And if you think about it, the thyroid is our battery. When the thyroid puts out hormones, that revs up every metabolic function in our body. So what happens if your adrenals, which are really our battery, what if they're low? If you have a battery and it's not fully charged and you keep attaching more lights to it, all the lights go dim. So what the body tries to do when the adrenals are off is it tries to block the effect of the thyroid hormone to slow things down so you're using less energy from the adrenals. <clears throat> when the adrenals are chronically low or you're chronically stressed, the body starts making that reverse T3 I talked about to block the receptor sites so thyroid hormone can't get in there and work. So you could have all typical hypothyroid symptoms and it could be the adrenal driving it. The thyroid, there could be decreased thyroid function. When that happens, it slows down liver function, among the other things. When liver function goes down, that's how we detox. The body starts dumping some of these toxins. It's trying to get rid of them, and the liver can't do it. It dumps it into the bowel. That causes more inflammation and stress on the body, which stresses the adrenals. So you get that cycle going. Then in the gut, that's where we have to absorb tyrosine and iodine. When the gut is getting irritated, not functioning well, you don't absorb tyrosine and iodine well, which can cause low adrenal function because you don't have the building blocks to make T4 and T3. Also, about 20% of your T4 gets converted to T3 in the bowel when it's working well. You're not, the bowel isn't working, as well as it should, you're not absorbed, you're nutrient depleted, you're more stressed, you have more inflammation, and that, you see how that can just cause everything to spin. Then that stresses the adrenals more, so you don't get a good night's sleep. So how are you the next day if you had a lousy night's sleep? You're even more stressed. And what do you do? You crave the comfort foods. And that makes blood sugar do this, which does what? to the adrenals, it stresses them. So all these areas need to be looked at. Lastly, which is getting very exciting now, we're realizing in, well we knew this, in every single cell, one of the organelles, one of the little parts inside is the mitochondria. And that's where everything goes on. It's where hormones are made, it's where ATP and energy happen, it's where we use and, can, and methylate our B12, our folic acid, it's where we, in the mitochondria in the brain, that's where all our neurotransmitters are made. And what happens if we're super stressed and the mitochondria, they're really the battery, the adrenal's the big battery, but these are the little batteries that really give us our energy. What if the mitochondria are getting weak and they don't have enough energy? the lights start going out and everything starts falling apart. And a lot of the things that we're doing and we're eating that we shouldn't be and we're exposed to directly affects the mitochondria, which then really affects this top area. Does that make sense <clears throat> how everything is really intertwined? Okay, so in here, we talked about 
we need for T4, we need one tyrosine and four iodine. Let's assume we have enough tyrosine and iodine coming into our body. When we're stressed, cortisol needs a lot of tyrosine. Our body is very smart. Nature gave us a great machine. When we have multiple things going on, the body decides what's most important for survival. So the cortisol is for fight or flight. You walk out of the cave, there's a lion there that says he wants you for breakfast. It doesn't get more important than that, getting out of that stressful situation. So when you're chronically stressed, you're going, the tyrosine is going to cortisol, not combining with the iodine to make T4. So the adrenal can be causing your hypothyroidism, and that's survival. Plus, as I said in the previous slide, when you're super stressed, the body is trying to make less active thyroid hormone so the energy can go to you getting away from the lion that wants to eat you. Another way of looking at it, when cortisol is elevated, our DHEA level goes down. That's a mother hormone that the body can use to make cortisol, female hormones, male hormones, and so that gets shunted over there. When cortisol is elevated, anxiety, increased cravings, carbs and sugar, increased cholesterol, midday fatigue, night eating syndrome, you're fine all day, you get home and you just clean, you just vacuum the cabinets all night till you go to bed. And your stomach's out to here, you're ready to vomit, you're so full that you starve. Yeah, okay. Um, weight gain, it affects the pancreas and we'll go into that. Now when cortisol is elevated, the tyrosine goes over to make cortisol for the adrenals and you wind up having a decreased metabolic rate. Your temperature goes down. The body is trying to slow down the use of thyroid hormone because it doesn't have the energy to do what thyroid hormone is trying to do. You can have dry skin, depression, fatigue, um, blood sugar <coughs> problems, decreased number of mitochondrial cells, takes you forever to get going in the morning. All thyroid symptoms, right? But that's the adrenal that's driving the thyroid to cause the symptoms. So my mentor, Dr. Hins, when I first met him, one of the things he kept saying, which I thought he was out of his mind, is if you don't have thyroid cancer or they didn't irradiate it or remove it, if you have subclinical or low hypothyroid, the adrenal is behind it. And if you don't address the adrenal, you're never gonna get the person stable. How many people have had their thyroid hormones, they have it go up a little bit, they feel good for a period of time, and then they feel lousy again. And then they change it again. And they, you just, same with female hormones, you keep chasing it because you're not, the body will adapt. If it's trying to inactivate your, your use of thyroid hormone, you can keep increasing your dose, you'll feel better for a while, it'll figure out a way to block it. And then you eventually get your level too high and you start having side effects and still feel lousy. How many people ever felt wired and exhausted at the same time? How can that be? You're either exhausted or you're jumping out of your skin. But that's a very common thing. I'm so exhausted but I can't sit still. And that's, the adrenals are revved up and it's blocking the thyroid, wired and tired. Yeah, what was the TNF that was on that last slide? Um, come back or something. Doesn't want me to back up. Uh oh. Well, we can't go backwards. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can do it this way. Nope. Okay. Gotta love computers. Okay, TNF is tum tumor necrosis factor. That's something that helps the body attack cancer cells. Okay. And so that changes. Okay. And let me, I'm sorry, we're having a technical difficulty here. Let me just see what that previous slide was so I can continue. Yeah, I learned to always bring the paper copies with me. <laughs> Were there. Okay, that one I was, that 
the previous slide, and I apologize, talked about the gut is very, very important. If you have a bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, or an imbalance, or candida, a leaky gut, that allows things to get absorbed into the body and inflames the gut. As the gut isn't working right, the adrenals get stressed. This is just, was just another way of showing what I showed a few slides earlier. When the adrenals are stressed, the liver doesn't function well. That dumps more into the gut, which then keeps that spinning around. And that causes a decrease in thyroid function because you're not absorbing the tyrosine and the iodine you need. So poor digestive health can lead to hypothyroidism. And again, the adrenals involved because if you're not digesting well, and you're not making thyroid hormones well, that has to be a stress on the body and the adrenals deal with stress. So we have to integrate what we're doing and every part in the body, just like in a car, if one of your fan, when we used to have multiple fan belts, now there's just one belt, but when there were three fan belts, if one fan belt broke, the car didn't run well. If you have a six cylinder engine and one cylinder breaks, the engine might run, but it's not gonna run well. So if thyroid, adrenal, the gut aren't all working well, the others can't work well. So the GI tract, we need the digestion to assimilate the nutrients and to eliminate the waste product. We use more laxatives and antacids per person in the United States than anywhere else in the world. So digestion isn't working. So how could anything else, you can't get nutrients in and you can't get garbage out. How can you be functioning to, to your peak performance with that going on? Digestion is aided by the pancreatic enzymes. Pancreatic enzymes need the thyroid functioning well. The thyroid is aided by the adrenal glands. So if any of those aren't working, the others aren't gonna work well. So the digestive enzymes require the right temperature to work, 98.6 degrees, or give or take a little bit. Temperature is regulated by the thyroid hormones because they get our furnaces, the mitochondria going up and down, energy-wise. So if your thyroid isn't working right, you don't have proper temperature, you can't make your pancreatic enzymes work well. Pancreatic enzymes, control the pH in the gut. And if the pH isn't proper, you can't absorb nutrients right, and your enzymes, the other enzymes don't work well. The adrenals and thyroid work <clears throat> together to control temperature, pancreatic function, thyroid function. So you can't separate these out. So dysbiosis, SIBO is really bloomed. A poor choice of words. There's a lot more SIBO now, not blooming but a lot more SIBO, that an underactive thyroid leads to constipation. If you're constipated, you can't absorb nutrients well. If you can't absorb nutrients well, you can't make thyroid hormones, so your thyroid doesn't work as well. So that doesn't mean there isn't a problem with the thyroid, but there's so many other things that we ignore, and that's why a lot of people with thyroid hormones, thyroid issue, never get to that point where they say, I feel great. They might feel better, but they don't feel good because we're not addressing the underlying issues. The beneficial bacteria in the gut need the right pH, the right temperature. They help us with hormone synthesis, breaking down hormones, converting T4 to T3. They help us with absorption of nutrients and with killing the bad bacteria. And 70% of our immune system function comes from the good bacteria in the gut. So if the it's sort of like the chicken of the egg. If the thyroid was off, the gut's off. If the gut's off, the thyroid's going to be off. If either of those are off, the adrenals are stressed, so they're off. So it's very hard to figure out who started this whole thing. But if you step back and look a little broader, you can figure it out and feel good again. Stomach problems, intestinal, bar intestinal overgrowth or imbalance can lead to all these symptoms. You don't have to have all of them, but if you have any of these symptoms on a regular basis, you have a gut problem. And everything, life and death, begin and end in the gut. If the gut, you're not digesting, breaking down the food, and eliminating the waste, 
efficiently, nothing's going to work. It's like putting water in your gas tank. The needle might say full, but the engine dies. So this is what our gut looks like. In the intestinal tract, we have a single layer of <coughs> epithelial cells, skin cells. They have very tight junctions, and we eat, and the body releases a substance called zonulin, which it dissolves the glue that holds these tightly together. They open up slightly, and things that should get absorbed into the bloodstream get in. And things that should get absorbed stay out. And what happens is, as the gut isn't functioning well, you start having bigger openings. So an example I always use is, let's say, whatever food you're having a problem with, let's say chicken. But, and these aren't real numbers, but you're supposed to have a two molecule group that'll fit through these little tiny openings, but you have the big opening, so a six molecule group goes in. You're supposed to eat chicken, but the body sees, just like with the thyroid gland, that six molecule group, that's not supposed to be here, and it starts making antibodies against it, then you start reacting to that food. That causes more inflammation, which makes these bigger, which then lets other things go in. And that's why when we have a digestive problem, the longer we go with it without fixing it, we start having fewer and fewer foods we can tolerate and more foods that bother us. And when you keep eating those foods, it inflames everything even more and it makes it worse. So that can lead to systemic inflammation, things can cross into the blood-brain barrier, have neurotransmitter issues, food intolerance, autoimmune problems, and nutrient deficiencies. You're not absorbing well, you're not getting enough tyrosine in or enough iodine in. So how can the thyroid work, which spins this even further out of control? So leaky gut causes gut inflammation, it then can, it goes over to malabsorption, the machine doesn't work as well, you get autoimmune response, more GI issues and more food sensitivities, more autoimmune, and it just keeps going and going. We have a big problem now, we probably never had this or knew about it, I'm sure most of us, the gluten problem. Just about everybody says has a gluten problem. And if you, one way a lot of people say, I don't. And I say eliminate white flour, white sugar, and gluten for 48 hours. And then that evening on the second day, have a big bowl of pasta, some nice homemade Italian garlic bread, a beer, have whatever you want, and then call me. And what happens is we're used to being tired, bloated, and constipated. And when you eliminate it, even for 48 hours, your energy level goes way up. And then when you eat it again, and it goes way down, and your pants, instead of being loose, are tight, you have to unbuckle them or put on the sweatpants, you really notice that. Because we're going around with our energy down here all the time. It should be up here, but this is normal. But it really isn't. So one of the things that happens is that zonulin is what opens up the spaces in between the cells. When you start reacting to food, you pump out histamine. That helps you deal with allergic reactions. Histamine binds up with gluten and releases, it gets the pumps on zonulin just flowing. So when you have allergic responses and you have food sensitivities and you're eating gluten, you cause even more leaky gut, which just makes that whole thing worse. The second problem is, years ago, we never had as much gluten in our food supply. There's gluten in just about everything we eat. They're putting wheat in everything. They're adding gluten. One of my friends is a chef, and he prides himself on, you know, by law they have to, but he has separate pots, separate dishes, because he doesn't want any cross-contamination if someone's gluten sensitive. They're coming to his restaurant to be treated and to be to eat and not get sick. And some of his clients that were really gluten sensitive kept getting sick. And he was yelling at his chefs, you're using the wrong pans, the wrong utensils. Lo and behold, the butter he was using, the butter manufacturer was adding some gluten in there. 
but it's below what they have to hoard. And the reason they do that is it sticks to the vegetables better. So he was doing everything right and he was 100% wrong. So there's gluten where you don't even know there's gluten. So if, you, if you're not celiac, you don't have to eliminate everything. But really look at what you're eating. We should be able to eat some meals pretty much gluten free. And that will really help the gut, which will really help this cycle. Gary, what do you say yeah. about the histamine? You said it's like it's another one of those crazy, horrible crazy cycles. Crazy cycles. Feedback loops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The histamine, if histamine is too high, once you cross a certain line and you're always reacting to things, histamine's always up because that helps us. But then the histamine causes more zonulin, which then causes more leaky gut, which causes more histamine release. I'm taking a course now since they map the genome. And we, 23andMe, you know, maps out your genes. There's now a doctor I'm working with where all that genetic information is going into a program and we're looking at the specific enzymes at the mitochondrial level and the metabolic products that, were, that are coming out. And about 46% of the people don't, I have, a, have an enzyme problem breaking down histamine. So that could very well be why we're having this explosion of allergies. Not just seasonal allergies, but food allergies and environmental allergies. New. And part of it is because I think because of our diet and the food supply and all the chemicals we've been using, we're corrupting the mitochondria. And those little guys are so important. So it's really fascinating by doing this and slow and steady seeing which pathways aren't working and supporting those pathways a lot of people are feeling better. And this was stuff that we learned in pharmacy school, the Krebs cycle and the uric acid cycle, and you hate, I hated it, you memorized it, you took the exam, you threw out all your notes, and thank God I'm never gonna have to see that again. And now it's interesting, because it makes sense. Now we can see what's actually happening in there. So there's a lot to be done. So if you have uncontrolled allergies, or every year, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. People with environmental allergies, that system is overloaded. Someone walks by with perfume and you have a problem. Your system is right up to here. And just that little perfume molecule pushed you underwater. That, most of the time, if you spend the time to really dig, you can help those metabolic pathways. Mitochondrial damage, these are things that can affect the mitochondrial mitochondria in a bad way. Oxidative stress, when we're stressed, we generate free radicals, we don't have enough antioxidants, and they go around zinging all through the body, damaging everything, especially the delicate mitochondria. Metal toxicity, allergens, infections, excessive blue light. <laughs> that, computer screen, fluorescent light bulbs. Blue light is what when we go out in the summer, it makes us feel so good and energized. That blue light stimulates serotonin, it gets our adrenals woken up, and then as the sun goes down, the blue light goes away, the pineal gland sends a message to start converting serotonin to melatonin, we get tired and have a good night's sleep. But what do we do? We're on our laptops till 11 o'clock, then we go to bed with our cell phone and checking Facebook <laughs> and texting everyone. I so so we're, <laughs> we're keeping our body in daytime mode till 11 o'clock. Melatonin levels are supposed to be the highest about an hour after sundown. So in the winter around here, our melatonin should peak around four or five o'clock. And if we're watching TV on any of our um, computers or anything, we're keeping us at daytime mode. We're giving blue light till 10 or 11 at night. So how healthy can that be? And that's damaging our mitochondria. Nutritional deficiencies, DHA, zinc, magnesium, low chromium, that all affects the mitochondria. And isn't it funny, DHA we need, zinc we need to help convert T4 to T3. What's low chromium? Chromium is used for blood sugar regulation, to get blood sugar into the cells. So everything affects everything. We keep, we're not a computer where you can pull out the hard drive and put a new one in. That hard drive affects everything. Yes? How, how about a lot of us have these large screen TVs and we watch movies at night? 
That's blue light also too. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And what's interesting, the cathode ray tubes had a lot less blue light, but they were putting out radiation. Mm -hmm. So I think you're better off with blue light than now they do sell on Amazon, you can get they look like sunglasses that filter out the blue light. Mm -hmm. So if you have you don't have to. If you're going to be watching a lot of TV, you can filter it out. For our computers, there's a free program called um, Flux, F-L-U-X. F -L -U -X. Mm -hmm. And it's a free program, it's a legitimate program, and it asks you where you live, so it tracks when the sun goes down. And that's why the screen isn't quite as blue, because I forgot to turn it off. I have it on my computer, so when you get to sundown, if you're sitting there over about a minute, you can see it shift. Now, what I did when my kids were in high school, I installed that on all the computers. You know, parent can do that. You know, I bought them. I can do whatever I want with their computers, and they were never there. But they both, both my kids said one night they're doing homework or on Facebook, hopefully doing homework, and they came out and said, I don't know, it must have been an update on the computer. It's not as harsh. The light is more calming, and that's because the blue light was gone. That's so a free app flux? Free app, if you just Google flux. Mm -hmm. Some guy developed it and thought, and you know, they tested it, it was, yeah. yeah, and he said everyone should have this. All right. so, so you can put it on your computer or your mobile device? I don't know if it works on mobile, yeah. but on the computers it works. Okay. okay. This chart very, looks very complicated, and it is, but basically what this is showing if you have a high energy expenditure, if you're stressed, or if you have tired adrenals or the mitochondria are getting damaged and not working, which means they're not putting out the energy they should, it affects the hypothalamus. There's the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. I mentioned that at the beginning. The hypothyroid pituitary ovary axis. Hypothyroid um, pituitary adrenal gland axis, they all affect each other. And just to show you, so if you are stressed or have low energy, whether it's that the thyroid isn't working, the adrenals aren't working, life is typical, and you're stressed, your kids are aggravating you, or your parents are aggravating you, or your boss is aggravating you, that causes a decrease in leptin. Leptin is something the body puts out to let you know, I've eaten enough, I'm satisfied. So you have less leptin, so you overeat. When you're stressed, you gain weight. It also increases ghrelin. And ghrelin is what stimulates appetite. So you're stimulating your appetite and decreasing the feedback, saying, okay, I'm full. So what does that do to us? Everything has a reverse reaction. Every time I'm stressed out, I lose like 10 pounds without trying. Well, part of that is, the your metabolic rate at first goes up, and so you're burning a lot more calories, you're probably too busy to eat, so you're burning more of this. If you were that stressed for a prolonged period of time, your metabolic rate would eventually slow down and you gain weight. And that's why with hypothyroidism, some people can't gain weight and other people can't keep the weight off. So it can go either way, depending upon how the other parts of the system are working. Good comment. As this is going off, TSH gets forced down because as you're stressed, the body doesn't want you to use the extra energy. So it tells the hypothalamus and the pituitary, don't stimulate the thyroid, which makes your thyroid hormone levels drop, which leads to low T3. You put in more T3, you go to the doctor, he gives you a prescription. That's great, you feel better for a little while. The body tries even harder to suppress that. And so that puts stress on all, more stress on the rest of these systems. So just throwing hormones in is a temporary, I feel good, but it's not a fix. If you go down this way, when the body is super stressed and energy level starts caving, you start getting an estrogen deficiency. I'll show you in a minute how when you're stressed, the body uses more progester um, progesterone in women. And that's why a lot of women going into menopause are estrogen dominant. 
It's not so much that their estrogen level is dropping, which it should be, but they're so stressed, they're burning through the progesterone, <coughs> and you need a, a ratio, a good balance of that. So a lot of the sleep issues are adrenal, but it's because the adrenals are using the progesterone, so you're low in progesterone, and that's why when they give you some progesterone, a lot of women sleep better when their levels are low. It also causes cortisol to go up. Side effects of taking prednisone, weight gain around the middle, irritability, hot flashes, and sleep problems. Gee, that's the same stuff with thyroid problems, isn't it? And with female hormone and with adrenal, because it's all tied together. You can't separate it. That's what your mitochondria look like. All these different nutrients, vital to good health and to the mitochondria. Iodine, we think of iodine for the adrenal, for the thyroid gland. We need iodine for the mitochondria to function. We need iodine for breast tissue health. We need iodine for prostate tissue health. We, back, I don't know if anyone here is old enough, um, back a long time ago, 30s and 40s, we had a goiter epidemic in this country because the soil got depleted of iodine. And so everyone was getting big goiter. Remember grandma? Some of our grandmothers had that big, thick neck, and it wasn't just fat, it was their thyroid. So what did the government do? They mandated that they put iodine, they iodized table salt, because we were all eating 20, 30 pounds of table salt a year. So we got our minimum amount of iodine. Then in the 60s, they said, hey, salt is no good for you. Cut way back on your salt, and we're going right back to a big goiter problem in this country due to lack of iodine. Soil's depleted, and we're not putting it back in. So we're back where we were. So iodized salt, doesn't have to be table salt, the sea salt, the Celtic salt. If it's made just dried, it has iodine. So iodized salt isn't bad. Anyone heard of PQQ? That's something that's been around. We've known about it for a while, but it never got traction until recently. They did studies. PQQ is one of the few substances, it's a great antioxidant. It helps us make new mitochondria. As we age, they die. As we damage them, they die, and that's the end of them. PQQ, they can count that you're getting more mitochondria, which increases energy. Problem is, 20 milligrams a day is the dose. It takes a long time for this to occur. So it's not that you take it and a month later, you're running the marathon. It's more, I'm 62, and if I start taking it when I'm 72, I'm gonna have a lot more energy, but I don't know what my energy would have been, so I really can't compare it. But in lab animals, you know, they've been doing a lot, and they see that there's much more energy output. Um, CoQ10 we know about, ray electron transporter, we need that, that works in the Krebs cycle for energy, alpha lipoic acid, the B vitamins, um, N-acetylcysteine, DHA, we think of DHA for the brain as part of omega-3 and how healthy it is, and the mitochondria, that helps generate ATP, which is what we use for energy. So if you are low on your good omegas, the omega-3, your energy output is way down without even knowing it, because the mitochondria are starving for something they need to generate energy. Um, probiotic in the gut, very, very important, because that'll help you get the nutrients in that the mitochondria need. Can I ask a quick question yes. on iodine? Yeah. I had a doctor once tell me that if you have too much iodine, you can suppress the cytokine. Yes. Um, the question was, too much iodine, the doctor told her if you have too much, it can suppress iodine. That's because the body will take the iodine and make more T4. What if you have plenty of T4 and you super overload the iodine? You are gonna force that system. So what we want to do is we don't want to force anything. We want to, you hired a mason to build a 10-foot wall of brick. And if you only gave him enough bricks for a six-foot wall, you're gonna yell at him, what am I paying you all this money for? You're the best in the world, you're an idiot. It was my wall. So we can give him a few more bricks than he needs and he throws out the extra and the wall gets done. So we need the right amount. There's a broad range. You don't have to worry about it. If you ate a little too much seaweed, I had a little too much kelp, you could have a problem. 
on mainstream, they go back to the old school and talk about you just need a couple of micrograms of mm -hmm. iodine. And yes, to have the thyroid function so you have some thyroid hormone, that's enough. Generally, it's 6, 12, 25 milligrams a day if you're hypothyroid and the body will use what it needs. A lot of it isn't absorbed. You don't get it all absorbed. And so, you know, you, if you, you could hurt yourself, but if you follow directions and take the recommended amount, you're not gonna hurt yourself. What was the recommended amount? It depends upon what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, you can start with um, the tablets come in six and a quarter, 6.25 milligram. Some people, we have doctors using up to 25 to 50 milligrams the first month. So how do you determine what the Well, is an iodine, how do you determine how much you need? Is an iodine test, you take a certain amount of iodine and you collect your urine for 24 hours and send it to a lab. So you know 50 milligrams went in, they see how much comes out. And if 42 milligrams come out, you have plenty of iodine. If three milligrams come out, you're dying for iodine. A better way is, if you don't have Hashimoto's, take a little and give it a month or two and see if you feel better. Because if you start making our T4 and T3 more appropriately, all those systems will work better and you'll overall feel better. Another thing we've got is people who are on thyroid hormone and we start giving them a little bit of zinc and selenium and a little tyrosine, a little iodine, and they go and have their blood work done their numbers are much better than they have been. So that means this guy could make more if it had the building blocks. Some people find they get a little hyperthyroid, and that just means they're over-medicated. They're taking in more than they need, because their thyroid, if you give it the building blocks, a lot of times can do it. So it's trial and error, and looking at labs, and seeing how do you feel, okay? All right, the next couple, um, Okay, to help improve the adrenals, first thing you want to do, eliminate stress. <laughs> and that'll probably get you in jail to kill a few. So that isn't good. Even though you get three, three meals a day, it's not healthy food, you're better off being out. But you want to remove toxins. We have a very toxic environment. Um, I had a consult the other day with a woman who's been a beautician for 30 years. And she now has her liver enzymes are way up. She has severe rheumatoid arthritis. So at first she thought this was just from this, going in and out of water all the time. But now it's all through her body. Her thyroid is acting up. All the different glands are acting up. And she's, the, the nail salons and a lot of the beauty piles are some of the most toxic places. And so the people who are working there, six, eight hours a day, breathing it and touching it, and they're putting their hands in warm water, which opens up the pores, and then it goes in. So we wanted to eliminate toxins. Cleaning supplies we use in our house. Toothpaste, deodorant, it has aluminum in it. That's what causes the pores to close. Aluminum is toxic. Part of Alzheimer's is aluminum. And we're busy smearing it under our arms seven days a week, sometimes twice a day if you're going out at night. How about using a non-aluminum containing deodorant, you know, but it's very dangerous for us. You want to eat a non-inflammatory diet, which means cut out or cut way back white flour, white sugar, hydrogenated fats, fast foods. Eat real foods that have one name. Might be three words, but it's one name. If you have to look at it and there's 14 ingredients and you can't even try to pronounce half of them, don't eat it because it's not good for life. Um, you want to make sure you're getting the right nutrients in, eating healthy. You want to exercise. That gets blood flowing, brings nutrients into the cells. It also helps calm you down. It also can stimulate your thyroid. And this is what parents used to tell us. You know, we all know what we need to do and we don't do it. And you, know, you have to, once you start, how many people have started, if you started exercising and then life gets ahead of you and for a week you can't do what you normally do. Besides feeling guilty, you don't feel good. We were meant to be moving and exercising. 
A healthy GI tract can be destroyed by antibiotics, drug medication, poor diet, processed foods, um, inadequate water, and laxative use. That's 80% of the population. Then the poor baby, if it was a C-section, it didn't go through the vaginal canal and get the healthy bacteria. So it has a digestive problem before day one is over because it never got the good bacteria. And then we irradiate all our food to kill the bad bacteria so they can't even get it from the food. So probiotics, very, very important. Okay, step one, we want to fix the gut. What I was taught by Dr. Hens, if it's a complicated case and you have no idea where to start, start with the gut. Because everyone's gut is a mess to different degrees. And everyone, if you start digesting, absorbing, and eliminating better, everything in the body starts working better. So you have to get the gut going and working. Probiotics, if you need it, digestive enzymes. If you do have parasites, there's things you can do for that. You want to eat as much organic as possible, the vegetables and fruit and nuts and real grains, not man-altered grains. You want to be, if you have inflammation in the gut, you know, talk to us. L-glutamine is very good. Deglycerinized licorice is very healing. There's homeopathics that help support the liver and the gallbladder and help you detox. I'm sorry? It depends. The deglycerinated licorice, you can. The regular licorice you shouldn't have with thyroid, with a thyroid problem, because it can overstimulate things. The deglycerinated, they change it, they pull out the pipe that's stimulating, it won't affect blood pressure or the thyroid. So that can be used in most cases. It's not a blanket statement for everyone. What was the thing about the black walnut and all that stuff? That's if there are parasites in the gut. Oh, so there's but there's natural things you can do for that too. And the parasitic infections used to be a third world country problem, but there's no third world anymore. We're a little tiny world, and we have just as many parasitic infections as they do in the backwoods countries. And those of you that have been here before probably know, where's the best place to pick up a parasite? Handrails on escalators and the armrests in a plane. And that's because nobody, a lot of people don't wash their hands. So what do you do when you get in the plane? You go to the bathroom, you wash your hands because they're going to serve you the snack food, and the nice person on the end won't get up for you to get in, so you have to lean over, and you step over them and grab the armrests and sit down with your clean hands. Then you pick up the seatbelt that 30,000 people have handled, and I don't know about women, but guys, when you go into the men's room, Half the guys go to the bathroom and walk right out the door. And I'm sure a lot of the women do too. And they're grabbing the seatbelt. Then, well, I already went to the bathroom and washed my hands. They give you your snack, you pour it in your hand and in your mouth. Okay? Oh, well, who's going away tomorrow? Okay. With thyroid, they talk about a lot of the foods aren't good for the thyroid. And these foods are goitrogens. They can cause goiter. The reason they do that is they block the deiodorase enzyme. So does that mean if you have a, a thyroid issue, you should never eat any of these? No. No. You can eat them. But you shouldn't have a pound of kale or eat a whole head of broccoli. You should have some broccoli in your salad. Maybe not every single night. And now with the juicing, people are putting heads of broccoli in and drinking. Who eats a head of broccoli? I had one of our friends who's a health nut, and she wound up in the hospital for three and a half weeks. They got, what's the, um, the big, for, for juicing, what's the big machine? A Vitamix. A Vitamix. She got a Vitamix, and she was doing great. 
she was every day eating a pound and a half of kale. Who would do that? She got so constipated, it was a couple of weeks in the hospital to get her bowel working again. Wow. It was too much of a good thing. We have people come in that are orange. It's <coughs> a carrot, and at least that won't hurt you. But they have an orange glow. Who eats a whole bag of carrots? So with the, with those juicers, juice what you would normally eat. It makes it easier, but not six times the amount. Yes. I thought those were only bad if, if they were raw. Well, the way yes, and if you cook them, it lessens it. But again, if you do have a thyroid issue, you don't. I would say rotate them, not eat six or eight of them every single day, the same ones. So raw. Now the next group that have thiocyanates, some of it's the same. What's really interesting, that competes with iodine for absorption. So what's very interesting is there's no thiocyanates in them when they're growing, but when it gets damaged, it, one of the chemicals in them turns into the thiocyanate. So when you cut it, or you tear it, or you cook it. So the way around that is, you wanna make sure you have an adequate, the reason we have a problem with thiocyanates are we don't have adequate iodine intake. If you are eating a lot of those, you can compensate for that by increasing iodine and that'll compete for absorption. You get enough iodine absorbed. But the problem is we're all low on iodine to begin with. And then you throw that in, and it blocks some of the iodine absorption, and it's even worse for you. Do you get the previous list also helped Very, by iodine? No. Okay. No. Just the that, that, the first list affected the body taking one of the iodines off T4 and or making T4. This one is in the absorption of the iodine. Okay? Not, don't not eat any of these foods. These foods are very healthy for you. Don't go, we all go to extremes. I'm going on a vegan diet and that's all I'm gonna eat three times a day. Not healthy. There's enough foods out there to rotate your yeah. foods. There's a big crossover there though. Yeah, some of them do both. Yeah. So it can doubly weigh your thyroid. Yeah, right. But let's go the other way. I don't have a thyroid issue as of now, thank goodness. And I eat all those foods, so why don't I have a thyroid issue? Because my body's working right. It's when the machinery isn't working right, then you do something like that. It has a much bigger effect. Okay? A lot of the things in the cycle aren't working right. You would talk about the gut and leaky gut and SIBO and all that. Yeah. Stuff. All that stuff isn't working right. And adrenals aren't working right, but you don't have a thyroid problem. Can you still eat this? And why don't you have a thyroid problem if Okay, because that shows how with all those problems, the question was if you don't have a thyroid problem but you have a lousy gut, you're stressed and all that, how come you don't have a thyroid problem? You might have a, thyroid might not be working as efficiently as it can which puts more stress on the gut and the adrenals but you're keeping your head above water. But I'll bet you if you have those other problems and they're not addressed, eventually down the road you're going to have serious mm -hmm. problems. It's just it shows how healthy you really are that the body can keep functioning now. So for someone like that, it's not critical today, but you want to fix it before everything collapses because it's a much easier fix when the machinery is still working. Okay. All right, so you want to heal the gut. Good probiotics, it helps with the mic. It's funny how the microbiome is in all the newspapers now. Yeah. And Five years ago, they were saying no such thing as good bacteria, probiotics are a waste of money. Now it's in all the papers, and probiotics are one of the healthiest things you can do. Funny how all of a sudden they're good, and they were a waste of money, and it was a scam before. Microbiome, most important part of our body. All right, this is what I alluded to before. Adrenal glands, when we're stressed, they put out adrenaline, epinephrine and norepinephrine. When we're not stress, we make some of that, and the body takes cortisol to make pregnenolone, to DHEA, to testosterone and estrogen. It also uses the cortisol to make progesterone, I'm sorry, the cholesterol and cortisol. And everybody's happy, everybody gets something. When you stress, everything goes down that pathway. So 
you you don't have your DHEA, mm -hmm. you don't have as much testosterone, and you have an estrogen problem. When you go down this way, you're using, if you need cortisol for fight or flight, for stress, you're eating up all your um, progesterone. And a woman who's having hot flashes is stressed, making cortisol, and her progesterone's dropping, which is throwing off her estrogen progesterone balance, which causes more hot flashes, which causes more to go down this way. Remember at the beginning I said, the body can use tyrosine for thyroid hormone and for cortisol. If you're going this way, you're sucking away from the thyroid gland. So eventually there will be a thyroid problem. <clears throat> this, I have a bunch of these in here. I'm not gonna go into real depth. If anybody wants the slide stack, send me an email. I'll leave your email up in that form. And I have this in PDF form and I can email it to you because a lot of these will probably be good to go through again and it'll make more sense the second time through. The adrenals, the OAT axis, ovary adrenal thyroid. So in the women, this could be an issue. Now, the next couple of slides, what we're talking, what I'm talking about is just giving thyroid hormones isn't the answer. So a lot of times, someone's exhausted. <clears throat> they need coffee to get going. They're either gaining weight, putting weight on here, they have no energy, their hair is dry, their skin is dry. It must be thyroid. Thyroid's awful, it's a little low, we'll give you thyroid hormone, you feel better for a little while, you get even more exhausted. Oh, you have to up your thyroid hormone. Most of you with thyroid issues have probably been in there. What if it was an adrenal issue? That's driving, you have both issues, but the adrenal's behind it. So, you have imbalanced blood sugar, you start having more of the energy drinks and coffee. Your thyroid becomes sluggish because when you're real stressed and the adrenals start getting exhausted, it slows down the use of thyroid hormones and the making of them, so your level does drop. So what do we do? We throw in more thyroid hormone, which stresses the adrenals more, which causes the body to try to shut down the thyroid even more. So it goes undiagnosed. Eventually, it affects the parathyroid, the pineal gland, and then you get adrenal fatigue, which is you have trouble getting out of bed. You walk three or four blocks and you need a nap. That's the extreme side. And that's all because we never thought of looking elsewhere, and we just kept pushing. The body's trying to do something, and we're trying to overdo the body. A little kid in third grade, when I talked in elementary school, we talked about diet, exercise, sleep, going out and playing, using your mind, and all that. At the end, he said, it sounds like nature gave us the best machine in the world, and we spend our whole life seeing if we can break it. And he's right, we do. Okay, the fix won't come from prescriptions. Prescriptions and hormone therapy is excellent. I'm not saying don't do it, but you have to look beyond that. That can help stabilize things while you fix the imbalance. You, if you start giving more thyroid hormones, you might have, when they check you, you might have high TSH, a low T3, and your T4 might be off. They give you thyroid hormones. You go and retest and the numbers are a little better, but you feel lousy. And then you test again and the numbers are low. Oh, you need a little more. That again is probably the adrenals driving the system because the adrenals are out of balance. Um, what happens if the adrenals are overlooked? You eventually stop burning out the system because you are forcing it to, you're forcing your thyroid to work at the right level when the body's trying to turn the lights down so the adrenals can regenerate, the gut can start working better. So that's why. If you think about it, if it was just low thyroid hormone, if you get enough thyroid hormone in, you should feel better than you have in decades. And very few people feel, they might say, I feel better than I did, but I still don't feel good. It's not right. Because you only fix, if it's a stool with three legs, you only worked on one leg, and the other two are wobbling. You have to fix them. Adrenal glands. So first thing to do for the adrenals, Figure out what's stressing you. If you're not eating well, that's a big stress. If your, if your environment is toxic, 
that's a big stress. If you're in a toxic relationship, that's a big toxicity load and stress. And what an elderly client said to me, the secret of life, what was that in, in um, what was the cowboy movie with Billy Crystal? Um, Sidney Slickers. 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 And what's his name, the cowboy said, this is the secret of life, and he never knew what it was. But she said the secret of life is the 80-20 rule. So with junk in our house, we use 20% of our dishes 80% of the time. We wear 20% of our clothes 80% and we have too much garbage. And we could do away with 80% of it. She said that's great, but she said out of stress, we can control about 20% of the things that stress us. 80% of it we cannot control. It's because of Jim's aggravating me every time I see him. And he's not, but I can pick on him because we know each other. Well. So what she said, the secret of life is he's always going to do that to you. And you can spend all that energy trying to go through him and get him to do it the right way. She said, or figure out how to let him think he's doing it the right way and work around him so I'm not stressed. He thinks he did it and he won and we're all happy. And don't mothers do that with their kids? You, the kids want to do this. And my wife did this with our kids one time. I'm sitting there and they want to go do this. And she says, Gee, that's a good idea. And she's talking and talking. 180 degrees, they came up with a real good idea and they go off and do what she wanted them to. And I looked at her and I said, you are really good. And she smiled. And the next morning I'm having breakfast and I looked at her and I said, you do that to me all the time. And she said, yeah, and I said, as long as I don't know it, I'm fine. But isn't that the way? She's genius. Yeah, she is. And, but women can do that. Guys, for some reason, can't do that. We dig our heels in and just keep hammering away and getting more aggravated. We never learn. Okay, secondary hypothyroidism. That's what most hypothyroidism is. It's not very few, a small percentage of the people have damaged thyroid. Most people, it's secondary. It's the exact same symptoms, but it's due to the gut and the adrenals. You have to address the thyroid, but you need to address the other two or you never get anywhere. And that really makes sense because if most people really think about their thyroid problem, it usually came after long-term stress. Either a real severe stress for a short period, or you were cranking for a long time. And so it is secondary. The system's starting to fall apart. There's the thyroid, how it affects the ovary, adrenal, um, thyroid axis. And a lot of this has to do with women because women have the majority of the thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. You know, we're guys are pretty lucky. That's not one of our problems. We have all sorts of other problems, but not that. So it when the thyroid is off, it affects metabolism, it affects okay, here we go. SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. When the thyroid is off, the body makes more of this and it binds up your hormones, female hormones, thyroid hormones. The only active hormone is free hormone in the body. When it's bound up, you can detect it, but it doesn't work. It doesn't get into the cells. So when the thyroid and the adrenals are off, the body produces more hormone binding globulin to pull those hormones out to sort of slow everything down. So we're not, old, we're not using too much energy. What does that do? Sexual function, fertility, erectile function. We're having we have people coming in in their 20s and 30s with fertility issues and erectile dysfunction. How sad is that? But it has to do with this whole picture, not any one picture. And I agree, it's warm up here. Are you guys warm? Nobody said anything. What's going on? We're up to 74 degrees. And then we're going to go cool down in a second. No, a lot of us we'll get it down to 68 then I'll put the heat on and bring it up to 80 and hopefully okay thyroid and adrenal thyroid hormone replacement without fortifying the adrenals is a big mistake if your adrenals are burnt out you've been revving too high and now they're getting low you throw thyroid hormones in you feel better for a short period and your battery goes even lower 
and then you're wired and tired mm -hmm. at the same time. You're pushing the system to go, and the battery's saying, come on, slow down, unplug a few lights. I had a question on that, when you mentioned it before, it came to mind, um, those two combination of wired and tired at the same time, because I've also understood too that people have with that have had this uh, thyroid and adrenal problem have been diagnosed in the past with bipolar disorder and I have I have it so I kind of get like I can be like that and that's that's I that's on one, one, of, that I'm one like. of the slides bipolar is listed whether it's true bipolar or you have those swings from everything's great to everything's a disaster and part of that is the body's trying to survive. Now, when we go down to the mitochondrial level, when things aren't working right and all those gears aren't spinning right, that's where we make our hormones up here. I mean, our neurotransmitters up here. And so when those cycles aren't working right and there's so much stress on the system, you're not making your excitatory and your calming and your feel good hormones or neurotransmitters appropriately, so the body tries to do everything. So on the days it's making the neurotransmitters, you're feeling better. Then all of a sudden something else goes underwater. So it says, okay, I gotta slow down over here, I'm gonna work over here, mm -hmm. and you eventually swing the other way. I keep doing that, like, yeah. I snap my fingers and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> now, also when the adrenals, they help us deal with stress. When our adrenals are good, you can, your fuse is this long. When your adrenals are tired, you can knock over a glass that has a half an ounce of water in it and have an absolute meltdown and be crying for 20 minutes. It's a big deal. It's an ounce of water. You get a paper towel, you take your elbow and wipe it up. Whereas other days, um, just as an aside, we had a party over our house. My wife makes the best cheesecakes, but she doesn't make them because they're not healthy for you. But she decided she was gonna make it. And she always told my kids, with any electrical appliance, like especially the mix master, when you turn it off and you're gonna put a spatula in there to scrape everything, you unplug it. And just plug it back in when you wanna do it again. That way you never have to worry. So she, I was working, she was stressed, she had, double batch of all the filling for the cheesecake mm -hmm. in there. She didn't unplug it. She lifted the mix master up and it has that big, yeah. whatever you call that on it. When she lifted it up, the, the beater, there was a, a little container where she keeps, we keep the spatulas and all that. And one of the wooden spoons hit the power switch. <laughs> the thing started spinning head to foot all over the ceiling, the cabinets, and like she just stood there and every, it was like a Three Stooges thing. She said, it was just dripping going splat on the floor. And she wanted to get, she started crying, then she started laughing. And she wanted to get her cell phone to take a picture because nobody would believe her. But it was over there and there was so much goop on the floor, she didn't want to spread it further. You could say she did it again and the cheesecake was delicious. But I forget why I even went there, but stress. And so when you stress, everything doesn't fire properly. Because she's never, she said, my whole life I've never not pulled the plug out. Mm -hmm. And so she said, luckily there weren't any fingers in there. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'll probably never do that again. It took her hours to clean it up. So yes, you can have bipolar. Also, with true bipolar is a lithium deficiency usually. That's why they give you lithium. And we mentioned earlier, when the gut isn't working well, you don't absorb lithium out of the diet. Yeah. So you're low to begin with, and you screw up the gut. Why the and gut? it's also salt, too. It's yeah. just like the iodine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, typical hypothyroid care. You present with higher normal TSH, low to normal T3, free T3. Everything is just off a little bit. Your body temperature, you're always cold. Um, you treat it for primary hypothyroid. The adrenals are overlooked, and what happens? You don't improve, or you get better, and then you get much worse, and you have to keep playing with your dose, up and down, and up and down. And then they eventually tell you, it isn't a thyroid problem, and you're getting depressed, you need to see somebody. <laughs> and there's women, and I'm not being a male chauvinist, I'm just saying what I hear all the time, you know, you're getting into that hormonal age. Maybe you should see somebody for some therapy or maybe you need an antidepressant. You do, because you're not being treated properly. 
and you're not fixing the problem. But even the antidepressants help for a little while, but that's not mm -hmm. the cause. The cause gets worse and the antidepressant isn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. Then it gets bad enough that it affects your relationship and the relationship gets a little toxic, which is a stress on the whole system. Mm -hmm. Nobody's fault that we didn't look broad enough. You have to take a step back and cast your net a little further. Mm -hmm. And it could be you have an adrenal problem and you have a gut problem. So you look at everything and see what do you need to do. There isn't a answer for everyone that has thyroid symptoms. There's eight million answers because you all got to where you are because of different reasons. You want to support the thyroid. You need iodine, iron, tyrosine, zinc, selenium, vitamin E, B complex, vitamin C. You need nutrients. You don't need mega doses of anything. You need some chicken soup. You need some of everything that goes in chicken soup. If you put a lot of one thing and don't put other things in, it's lousy soup. But Gary, <laughs> yes. if you have leaky gut and you've taken all these like super wonderful supplements like your money. me over the years, and you spend a boatload of money, if they're just like you're flushing them down up, the toilet. Right? Exactly. But taking them while you're fixing the gut, you are getting some absorption, so it's helping. But yet. If the boat's leaking and you're spending all your time bailing the water out, you're not going to go anywhere. So the gut is the root of everything, health and illness. Selenium and zinc, exercise, um, vitamin E. Now, products, not a product sales lecture, but there are things, something like, there's a bunch of companies that do it. Natural Creations makes Nutriplenish Thyroid. Backbone is a good multiple vitamin, and it has all the things you need for the thyroid added to this, not in mega doses. It's the seasoning in the soup, just so you're getting some. You can get tyrosine separately. You can get iodine in liquid. You can get iodine in capsules. This one is tyrosine in iodine, so if you're taking a good multiple vitamin, you can add this if you need it. Um, absorbable zinc, absorbable selenium, adrenal support. What do all of you need? I have no idea. You know, you're all very nice people, but we need to talk to see what's going on with you. So this is why I think mainstream fails in the hormone balancing because the model we have, they can't spend any time with you. And to sit down, you're probably talking minimum if you're super organized and it's easy a half hour to figure out where to start and they have 10 rooms set up my doctor finally retired and he started dropping insurance companies they told him he wasn't seeing enough patients per hour yeah. and so he had one of his med students look at the expense ratio for his patients compared to other practitioners in the area and his expense ratio was much lower. There were fewer drugs and fewer hospitalizations. So he said, you should pay me more. And they said, no, 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 you have to see more people. You're spending too much time. And so he eventually got out of medicine. Mm -hmm. Does the hypothyroidism cause the goiter or there's separate issues? It can be two things. Either you're attacking your thyroid, an autoimmune problem, or the thyroid doesn't have enough of the building blocks and so it keeps trying to work harder and it's like a muscle if you keep working it it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and getting inflamed because it's working and not getting anywhere and it's not ever reaching the level where the body tells it to shut off for a little while so it overeats so it could be either way and can it be hyper or hypothyroidism yeah. and you only mentioned hypo tonight is well, hyper the opposite hyper is the opposite say? the thyroid mm -hmm. is overproducing. But the so symptoms have, similar? They, they mm -hmm. can be. But usually with hyper, you are wired. You can't sleep. You are bouncing. You are tapping. Like even now, you wouldn't be able to sit. Is your TSH? TSH would be almost non-existent. The body's trying to shut down the thyroid. So it would be a low number from like the range is one to four? So you'd be in the point one, point two or even zero. Okay. That's what they told me, I guess. Yes. What are your thoughts about the Epstein-Barr virus contributing okay. to all of this? Okay. 
that was one of my thoughts on Epstein Barr virus. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> that affects the adrenals. It affects the thyroid. It's a super stress on the body. It affects your digestion, your elimination. So that's a real big thing. And is that primary causing everything else, or did? the thyroid or the adrenal imbalance cause the immune system to go down so you got Epstein-Barr. Mm -hmm. We don't know, chicken and the egg, which one was first. Are, are <laughs> physicians starting to address that and, and check Some it? Some of them. But the, the big problem is you go to the endocrinologist for the thyroid, you go to the infectious disease doctor for this, you go to the gynecologist for that, mm -hmm. each one says, what are you taking? And they look you up, what I'm gonna give you isn't gonna interfere, but nobody's looking at, geez, what's the pattern here? Mm -hmm. What's going on that's causing all this? Nobody mm -hmm. has the time, and that used to be the GP, and then it was the internist, but not picking on internists is the way the insurance is set up. The internists are just a gatekeeper, they just write referrals. Yeah. They don't then, they get all the information, but they don't, you don't go to the specialist and you see your internist who says, okay, we've got all this data, this we're gonna disregard because, and this is where we need to work on. Mm. You have all these different people each doing their own thing and the body can survive, but you never really get it or get it together. So Epstein Barr is a big thing. Any type of chronic infection mm -hmm. is a big problem. Along those lines, any thoughts with persistent Lyme? Yeah, you're fighting something 24-7, you're generating a lot of metabolic waste, you're probably not eating as well as you should be because you don't feel good, you're under a lot of stress, that stresses out the thyroid. Then your immune system is busy working on the line, so what happens if you stop making some funky thyroid cells? your immune system goes into overdrive and you start having an autoimmune response, or you could have an autoimmune response. Then, if that's going on, there's less, um, not supplies, less, your body has less capacity to deal with the line, which is another stress which affects the adrenals. And if you're in fight or flight, you're not digesting and eliminating well, so you're not absorbing the nutrients you need to do all this work that's finally out of control. So any type of infection, Candida, systemic candida infection, SIBO infection, <laughs> someone with bad allergies, all these things can eventually collapse the system. You just fight everything at once. You have to figure out how to support the whole body. That's very, very important. Okay, so the key to improving the adrenals. If the thyroid medication isn't working long term, big flag should go up. <laughs> Talking, think about adrenal. As the adrenal is improved, you might find you start going hyper if you want thyroid medicine. It's like someone who's overweight that's on a lot of high blood pressure medicine to keep it down. Then they start exercising, eating well, and they lose 90 pounds. And all of a sudden, they have low blood pressure and they're passing out. Does that mean they're sick? No, they're over-medicated. They don't need that much anymore. So your thyroid medicine or your female hormone therapy will change as the system is regulating better. Hypothyroid, adrenal, and that whole axis thing. With adrenal fatigue, you have weight gain at first because cortisol goes up, and then eventually you have trouble gaining weight. With hypothyroidism, it's usually a weight gain. With adrenal fatigue, fluctuating temperature, hypothyroid, it's usually a steady temperature that's off. Brain fog, slow thinking, sometimes depressed, frequently depressed, full eyebrows, sparse eyebrows, um, thin brittle nails, normal to thick nails. That's not carved in stone for everybody, but that's usually a pretty good breakdown to help you figure out what is the underlying imbalance that's driving the other imbalance. And again, you can write all this down. If you give them your email upstairs, I'll email them to you. If you want them, I'd love you to have them. So that way you can keep referring to them. Um, this one's a little hard to read. It just goes on and on. Adrenal fatigue, you have headaches, muscular aches, and a lot of times migraines. With hypothyroidism, it's usually just the muscle and joint aches. Adrenal, you're hyperreactive, you're hyporeactive. Someone with 
with hypothyroidism, they might have a short fuse, but it takes them a while to lash out at you. Someone whose adrenals are off the wall, you look at them the wrong way, and they'll tell you hell. They have enough energy to kill you. Um, GI, irritable, GI irritability and hyperactive, usually diarrhea. This one's usually constipation. Um, intolerant to cold, intolerant to heat. And again, it's not 100% of the time. Some people, things can reduce. But it can help you figure out what's behind what's going on. Hormone imbalances. Men and women, we all have all different types of problems. And again, if the sex hormones are off, nine out of 10 times, they, might, they are off, but there's an adrenal issue behind it. And so we have a lot of guys who are even going all the way to the point of the injection because Viagra doesn't do anything. And that doesn't work when you can't make nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is part of the citric acid cycle and the Krebs cycle, which is going on in the mitochondria, which are being damaged because the gut's off and all the, and you're super stressed. And so even if you can't make nitric oxide, so Viagra does nothing. But if you get th those cycles working, all of a sudden, it's like high school, and I'm not being crude, <laughs> but you start, you wake up in the morning and things are working. And it was a nice surprise. But we shouldn't be having all these sexual problems, sexual function problems, and infertility. It's, it's a great business for the fertility clinics. But look at most of even the 30 year olds that want to get pregnant are going for fertility treatment. You know, that's almost more common than getting pregnant. And a lot of it goes back to all these areas are out of balance. Nature only wants you to procreate when you can make good baby and nurture the baby. So when your system's way off, she doesn't want you getting pregnant. So the way to do that is, guy can't get an erection or the woman can't get impregnated. And it works great. You don't make unhealthy kids, offspring. Because of course we all know the only reason to have babies is to perpetuate the species. Where, I remember one doctor said, the reason we have all these overcrowding in the world, if you look way, way back when everyone died young, a third of your life you were a kid and you grew up, then for a third of your life you reproduced, you spent the last third raising the offspring, then you died and left room and food for the next generation. Now we're living four, five, six times as long. And that's probably good because then we can aggravate our kids. And get back and back. <laughs> okay, thyroid support, we talked about this. All this stuff is very good for the thyroid. All this stuff is very good for you. Tyrosine, fish oil, B vitamins, probiotics, vitamin D. Um, you need iodine for healthy breast and prostate tissue, not only the thyroid. You don't need mega doses of anything. When the thyroid's working like it should, you should have increased energy, normal heart rate, normal weight, better mood, healthy metabolism, you deal with stress. You can still have a lot of stress, but you deal with it better, so you really are experiencing less stress. Better, better body temperature. Perspiration. How many people use, remember Mitchum and Mitchum Extra Strength and all that? We're using more and more aluminum to hold back perspiration. When you're stressed, you perspire. So then you're using the aluminum which closes the pores so the water builds up and then you don't, we were meant to be like a woman. You glisten, you're moist, and it, ev it evaporates and it cools us down when we're stressed because we're hot when we're stressed. But we hold it all in, you get a half an ounce of water in there and eventually that pore can't stay closed and it's like squeezing a sponge and you get that big, huge circle under here. So if you use something like the, um, I'm drawing a blank. There's some primal pit paste we have upstairs, they call it. It's an essential oil in there to kill the bacteria because it's the bacteria that cause the odor under our arms. And it comes in a stick and a spray and a, a paste. But what happens is usually the first couple weeks you're more wet because you're not closing the pores and all that waste product is hanging out in your lymph system. So when you don't have the aluminum there, the body starts flushing it out. And then what the majority of people find a week or two or three later, 
all of a sudden you can be stressed. I could crank the heat up to 80 degrees and you're just a little moist, you're not wet because the body's finally, we're letting it regulate itself. So think about using a different deodorant. Shouldn't be using an antiperspirant. And most people find that they switch to just deodorant within a couple weeks, they're less wet than when they use an antiperspirant. Regulates a woman's cycle, blood pressure, shiny lustre, have it, shiny lustre is here, of sharper memory, normal cholesterol. Remember I showed you that chat that we use cholesterol to make the adrenal hormones and our male and female hormones. When you are stressed for a long period of time, cholesterol goes up. So what do we do? We give Lipitor and force it down, which doesn't let us deal with the stress better. So how about we figure out why is it, some people it might be genetic and there's a problem in the liver, but nine out of 10 times, there's a reason the body is pumping up cholesterol. And cholesterol isn't the problem. They even found for heart conditions, high cholesterol isn't the reason you block your arteries. It's the free radicals that are inflaming the arteries that cause the block. Because you put people on Lipitor, give them a triple bypass, get the cholesterol down to 150, and they reclog in 20 months. So we're back to what we discussed tonight. Lifestyle changes. You want a good sleep routine, eat healthy, exercise regularly, minimize exposure to toxins. Some of it we can, but we're in control of most of our exposure. So take the time to clean things up. Reduce stress, drink plenty of water, sipping it. Um, enjoy life. Um, so one of your former sides um, did chlorine and... Um, oh, yes. Not chlorine. Chlorine, and bromide. And the other one. Um, um, fluoride. 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 So, okay, those are, remember the periodic table? Mm -hmm. Those are all right after each other in the same <coughs> spot. They compete with each other. So we used to put iodine in bread as an anti-caking substance. But then we were paranoid. Geez, people, if they eat a lot of bread, they might get too much iodine. They were talking little amounts. So they started putting bromide in bread. Bromide competes with iodine for absorption. And we're eating way too much bread. Fluoride and chlorine in the water compete with iodine for absorption. So we have less iodine in our food. We have a bigger demand in the body because we need more because we're low on it. We're putting in bromide, chloride, and fluorine, fluoride, which competes with the absorption. So we're getting even less when we do get it in our diet. And we wonder why we have a thyroid epidemic. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, so. the, you know, you're even saying, I just discovered, this sounds so crazy, but I use those little um, flosser things, and, you know, I get great reviews at my dentist, and then just one day, I just happened to be at the store, and I read down, way down the bottom, I use toothpaste without fluoride. They have fluoride, fluoride all over them, so now I had a search cleanse without fluoride. So you really have to be vigilant, and... You know, all these things. Things are everywhere, everywhere where you don't even imagine they would be. Right. Yeah. And, it's um, like gluten you, and you, you and I have known each yeah. other for Forever. so many years. And, you know, we're just always telling you my story. And I was like, and then I discovered, you know, and it's just like, for the love of God, yeah. you know? So you have to be vigilant and look at everything because it's it's crazy. You never know what's going to be there. <laughs> but, but can I just say this? <laughs> Gary is a gigantic support. You have to learn more from you than any of the other doctors. Thank you. Yes. So I'll be around for questions and answers. Some of you are hot and some of you are cold. So what I ask is if we go upstairs, there's more rooms to spread out and we'll be hanging around. Um, any of the thyroid products are 10% off tonight, but don't buy stuff if you need it, but if not, talk to me or call me or email me. We can set up all the time if it's complicated, but find out what you need to do. We need to start. Oh